Hey, what's going on guys? Intimidation with you, and uh, I'm filming my Fidoli Hayati colony once again, and um, the last video that I had on my Fidoli colony was a, a while ago, and they only had about, I don't know, 30 workers. They're now up to about 100. Uh, they've exploded in population. Uh, there's just a ton of them. This is a partial uh, representative of the colony, the whole population. This is, uh, they're, I found a, uh, a dying honeybee outside and I figured it would make a good meal for my ants and uh, they seem to be enjoying that and uh, you can see various soldiers and workers working on that corpse and uh, I'll show you the colony or the nest in a second here um, but this this colony is, is interesting in one really uh, peculiar peculiar way uh, sh it's it's young it's it's about a year old and it's it's producing male ants and that's it as far as elates go it's but uh, ant colonies do not produce winged elates until uh, they mature and uh, this this queen continues to produce them and uh, I will get back to you with a behavior that I saw earlier today when I turn the light on for them in the morning all the males are out in the foraging area trying to fly away so I will try to get that on film for you uh, tomorrow, possibly, and then I will throw that up on YouTube for everybody to kind of check out and uh, see for yourselves. Uh, and uh, as they feed on this uh, honeybee in front of me, uh, as you can see in the in the left in the left side of this foraging area is the pile of all the insects that I've ever fed them. That's what that is—just a pile of insect parts and uh, ants sometimes uh, well actually they they do most of the time uh, what they'll do is they'll mark their their feeding grounds and they'll mark their territory with um, basically fecal matter and I know that sounds kinda weird but it's true and ants don't have typical fecal matter as let's say like a like a uh, a hard substance. It's usually a liquid and they smear it on their uh, frequented pathways and frequented areas that they that they own, that their territory. And they've actually done it so much in this foraging area that it's starting to cloud up the bottom of the foraging area. I know it's kind of gross, but that's what that is. That's all that, those little dots. So uh, I'm going to show you the nest next and show you just how big the colony really is and uh, we'll get back to you in a second. Okay, here's a view inside the tube that I have for their nest and uh, it is really filled in there. I got to get them a new uh, foraging tube to live in or uh, make them a completely different setup. but. Um, this is pretty much, I mean, if you guys are successful with a colony of ants in a test tube, I mean, this is, I mean, they can get as, as successful as this. Uh, Fidoli hayati, they're, they're a small species of ants, so, you know, you can, you can fit a pretty big population in a, in a regular sized test tube. Um, I think the size of the test tube that I have these in is 150 by 33, or something, something along those lines. It's very long and it's kind of skinny and this seems to work well and as I said before this colony produces male ants and you can see how many male ants that are in there there's there's quite a few when I like I said when I woke up this morning there was at least uh, I think there's at least 20 or 30 male ants that are in this colony and they were all out in the foraging area flying around and uh, yeah it's a really interesting behavior that I've never seen in a young colony before so uh, you can see various uh, soldier ants on the on the uh, ceiling of the test tube there, feeding other ants. Um, and there's a ton of pupa. All the pupa is centered right where the queen is in the center there. And then on the left side, what they do is they pile their younger larvae against the cotton where it's more wo uh, where most of the water is. Larvae require a little bit more moisture than pupa do. Pupa only require warmth to uh, to grow faster. So it's good to have a variance of degrees of temperature like in your setups so ants have the choice of putting their, their, their young in different areas of uh, different stages of growth. 
So like eggs and young larvae are on the left where it's more moist and uh, maybe even cooler. And then uh, the pupa are in the middle where it's centralized and warmer. And uh, I, I shine a light on these guys, um, but I cover the test tube with something dark. But the the warmth from the light still absorbs into the tube, but not the uh, not the direct light because you don't want to burn your ants. You don't want to you don't want to uh, you know they'll they'll suffocate from the uh, the warmth and the combination of the uh, moisture in the test tube. It'll actually uh, suck the moisture out of the out of the cotton and drown them. I've seen that happen before. I've I've actually made that mistake, and that that only happens if you put the light too close. So try to try to put it at a safe distance. I have mine at uh, about 12 inches away from the actual test tube, maybe maybe more than that, 18 or something. So just as long, put your hand over the test tube and make sure there's enough heat hitting it. If you feel the heat difference on your hand, then you know it's it's pretty good. Um, but make sure you cover your test tube. Don't let, don't let the direct light hit them unless you're viewing them. Uh, that's the only thing that I recommend. But yeah, that's my Fidole Hayeti colony, and they are doing awesome. So I'll get back to you guys with that other, uh, that kind of mock mating flight they do in the morning. Uh, I'll try to get that on video and uh, throw that up on YouTube for you guys. Alright, man. Alright, guys. Peace out.